Welcome to today's training, Everyday Science on a Shoestring Budget. Inexpensive and simple science activities to do at home. Thank you so much for joining us today. We know that parents and family members are a vital part of, of ch a child education process and educational experience. Even in the age of technology, there is no substitute for parental and family involvement in the education of a child. The process of absorbing, processing, and comprehending knowledge does not have to take place in the formal classroom. With an inquisitive mind, a simple walk through your yard or neighborhood park can open a new world of experiences. Today, we are going to look at how you can engage your child in everyday science activities that are both simple and expensive, yet can result in priceless experiences to further their scientific thinking skills and appreciation of the world around them. Here in Hillsborough County, our vision is to prepare students for life. We know that students are constantly learning, both in the classroom and at home. So it is important that we work together to help our students continue their learning in both environments. Our mission is to provide an education and the supports which enable each student to excel as a successful and responsible citizen. Thus, we are very fortunate to have your support and we are thrilled to be able to share some strategies that we all can use to help our students grow as scientists. One of the critical science process skills that students acquire and fine tune throughout their elementary career is being able to communicate with others. Communication in science can involve both verbal and nonverbal spoken and written forms. Please take this time to create your own science notebook using just a few sheets of paper. If you want to make a similar science notebook for use at home, any type of paper can be used and no staples or tape is needed. Please follow the instructions on the handout provided. Be sure to label and take ownership of your notebook, labeling the front cover, My Science Notebook. Similar to a real science notebook, you will use this space to make note of your ideas and communicate your reflections through writing. Anytime you see this image, you will be recording in your notebook. If you'll be following along with the next couple slides, you are going to need straws and scissors, rubber bands, and a ruler. Before we really get into our training today, I have a question. How many of you listen to the radio today? The TV? A voicemail on your phone? Did you ever stop to think about how those sounds that you heard were made? Well, we are going to investigate that very question. How are sounds made? Here is your challenge. Using the objects listed before and provided, make a high pitch sound and a low pitch sound. After exploring, Record your answer to the question on the screen. Explain with words or make a labeled sketch to show how you were able to make a high and low pitch sound. Please reference the Sounds of Science handout in your participant packet. While you were exploring, I was feeling some good vibrations. It seemed as though you were having fun. What was enjoyable about this exploration? Perhaps it was that you were very engaged. I imagine this would be something that your child would enjoy, don't you agree? So what did you discover during your exploration? You may have discovered that you were able to make a high and low pitch sound. You may have also determined that sound is caused by vibration. A critical component of science activities at home is always having your child talk about what he or she experienced and discovered. When students communicate, they are able to better make sense of concepts and are able to identify new questions that they may have as a result of the activity that they experienced. We are not here today to dig into how sound is caused by vibration. Rather, we are here to share some ways that you can engage your students in science activities similar to this one and that they are inexpensive and easy to do. Often, all it takes to get your kids talking about science is just a few common items and a question. In your participant packet, you will find some additional ideas for exploring sound at home. One of the most important things a parent or family member can do to encourage students to think scientifically is to simply build upon students' natural curiosity. Taking the time to stop and investigate at home is as simple as saying, let's find out. Take a look at this. How can we figure out a way to, and I wonder if. The curriculum used in our Hillsborough County Public Schools is the Next Generation Sunshine State Standards. Within these standards, each grade level has a specific nature of science benchmarks that serve to build upon students' natural curiosity of the world in which we live. Let's take a look at the nature of science benchmarks. 
Using the Nature of Science handout in your packet, please take a look at your student's specific grade level standards. Take one minute to highlight, circle, or underline the actions or activities your student is expected to be engaged in during this year's science experiences. When reflecting on what you noted in the Nature of Science benchmarks, it's easy to see that these benchmarks build on students' natural curiosities to explore the world around them, ask questions, share how they know, and investigate through free exploration. In science, we devote a great deal of time cultivating our students' scientific process skills because these are the qualities that can be applied in multiple content areas and will serve our students in innumerable situations throughout their lives. Listed on the screen are just a few of the scientific process skills that are incorporated in many of the activities that we will share today. Observing. When we use one or more of our senses, sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell to take in information, we are observing. Measuring. When we observe things in standardized units, we are measuring. Non-standard, customary, or metric units may be used. Predicting. When we state what we think will happen, we are predicting. Classifying. When we group things based on their characteristics, we are classifying. Inferring. When we make statements based on observations we have made, we are inferring. Investigating. When we test a hypothesis with an experiment and record and reflect upon the results, we are investigating. Communicating. When we share information through charts, graphs, lab reports, or other means, we are communicating. Science starts with a question. Questioning is part of the science process. It is important for a parent to ask questions even if you don't know the answer. As scientists, we are constantly asking questions and then investigating, exploring, or even doing research to find the answers. Though time is certainly a limited resource for many of us with work, household responsibilities, and after-school commitments, Taking time to ask your student questions and investigating together to find the answers are truly invaluable experiences that will stay with your child for years to come. Throughout the rest of our time together, we will look at a bunch of ideas of how to support scientific thinking at home that are inexpensive, simple, and can easily be incorporated into your everyday life. If you're going to follow along, you will need your science notebook, a pencil or a crayon, and a leaf. If you don't have a leaf, a coin, such as a penny or a quarter, can be substituted or even a car key. One way to encourage students' observational skills is to have them look closely at nature. Plants are wonderful to observe because they can expose students to both fast and slow changes. One sense of wonder and amazement can be targeted when growing plants. How can a tiny seed transform into such a different looking plant? Students can practice skills associated with measurement and making predictions as they observe how a plant changes over time. In your participant packet, we have included a few ideas for you to try at home. Please reference the Watch Their Science Grow handout as we look at just two of these ideas. Let's look at making a terrarium. All you need is a clear container with a lid, soil, small rocks or gravel, grass seed, and water. Simply put the gravel at the bottom, then the soil, followed by a sprinkle of grass seed, a few squirts of water and you are done. Once you put the lid on the container, the soil should stay damp due to the lid allowing evaporation and condensation to occur, and as a result, providing a perfect growing environment for the grass. Since the container is see-through, your student can observe the grass as it grows. Now let's take a look at doing a leaf rubbing. Leaf rubbings can be made by placing a leaf under a notebook page or a sheet of paper and rubbing lightly over the leaf with a pencil or a crayon. Let's go ahead and quickly try this activity out. Place a leaf, or a coin or a key, under the next page of your notebook and lightly rub over it with a pencil or a crayon. How could this activity support your students growing science skills? Well, students can compare their rubbing to the leaf or to the coin and notice differences and similarities. Students can also label parts of the leaf that are visible on the rubbing. A hand lens or a magnifying glass can also be used to note fine details in the leaf or in the coin that they are rubbing and recorded as well. Please reference the Focus on Details handout in your packet. Another way to encourage observational skills is to provide your students with science tools that they can use to explore their environments. When using any kind of science tool, it is important that students are asked and then think about the answer to the following question. 
Why do scientists use tools? Binoculars can be used to observe the appearances and actions of animals outside without getting close to them when it comes to a distance. Microscopes can be used to look very closely at samples of water, plant parts, hair, material fibers, etc. Telescopes can be used to observe the stars and the moon, objects whose physical attributes are unfamiliar to students because they are so far away. Hand lenses or magnifying glasses can be used to zoom in and observe details of objects that they may be hard to see otherwise. For example, challenge your students to find the tiny Abraham Lincoln on the back of the penny. If you do not have access to a hand lens or magnifying glass at home, you can easily make your own magnifier at home using Ziploc bag and a little bit of water. Just put a tablespoon of water in a bag, zip it closed, and you have a magnifier. Place the bag with the water over newsprint or any picture or text, and the picture text under the water should look visibly larger. Try exploring with different amounts of water and or liquids to see if magnification is affected. Many of the tools mentioned on this slide can be found for reasonable prices at toy stores. Some of these tools have been available at dollar stores as well. Most kids are natural collectors, from rocks to trading cards to cutesy erasers sold at school book fairs. You can encourage your student to use a previous collection or start a new one to practice classifying objects based on their physical properties. This could include a collection of rocks, leaves, shells, flowers, coins, buttons, stickers, or any other natural or synthetic objects that are safe to be handled and are found to be interesting to your specific student. Not only will your student look forward to adding new pieces to his or her collection, but he or she will also fine tune the science process skill of classification as you encourage him or her to sort the objects in the collection based on size, shape, color, texture, hardness, the ability to sink or float, when appropriate of course, or attraction to magnets. You can encourage your student to focus on specific attributes by allowing your student to sort the objects first and then challenging him or her to guess how you sorted the object a second time. Food items such as pasta noodles, beans, many breakfast cereals, and candies can be classified easily by shape and color. Egg cartons make functional sorting containers that collections can be stored in as well. Please refer to the kitchen science handouts in your packet. If you have water, then you have science that is just waiting to happen. Most kids love the idea of helping do the dishes until it becomes their assigned chore. Why not build upon that natural curiosity related to water play by investigating sinking and floating? Students could make predictions regarding whether objects will sink or float and then test the objects to find out. Water is changing states all the time. A simple and no mess science connection is having your student observe and describe changes in water when it boils, melts, evaporates, freezes, or condenses. With the aid of a measuring cup, you could investigate if you freeze an exact amount of water, will you have the same amount when it thaws? Even very simple investigations involving timing how long it takes an ice cube to melt can truly support your student's scientific thinking when it comes to understanding that some things in life happen fast while others happen slowly. You can investigate physical changes when cutting up fruits and vegetables when preparing meals, as well as the chemical changes when cooking and baking. Having your students observe cook cooking tools is a great way to help them make a connection to the importance of tools when it comes to making work easier and keeping people safe. For example, you could pose a question such as, why do pans have plastic handles? Or do we use oven mitts? Even asking your student which tool is used to measure the temperature of the meat when you're cooking, or which tool helps you measure the exact amount of oil to use when making cupcakes supports their scientific thinking. Being that the kitchen is associated with food and eating, why not chat and chew over what happens to the food that you eat? As you and your child share a snack, name the different organs in the body that the food goes through. And of course, there are many experiments that can be done using common kitchen products such as yeast balloons, making your own lava lamp, and swirling milk just to name a few. Please consult your packet for directions and materials needed for these investigations. Please reference the Be a Meteorologist handout in your packet for information on the slide.
The weather is something that many of us are interested in on a daily basis, with some of us checking for updates on our phones or on the TV multiple times each day. Therefore, a very natural long-term investigation to involve your student in would be to start keeping track of the weather where you live. Students can keep daily records of rainfall and temperatures. You can use outdoor thermometers and rain gauges at your house or use an app on your phone or access a local news channel website to find this data along with the humidity and barometric pressure readings. Some local grocery stores provide severe weather tips and checklists as well as hurricane tracking maps that you can discuss and use at home. Instead of just looking up at the sky and talking about what shapes the clouds resemble, you can help your student learn to identify clouds using a cloud wheel based on the observable characteristics of the clouds in the sky. There is a cloud wheel in your participant packet as well as the website you can visit if you wanted to print it out in color. If you do not have access to weather tools, there are some tools you can make at home. Please see the handouts in your participant packet for directions on how to construct a windsock and a rain gauge. No matter which aspect of our daily weather you decide to focus on and include, just know that you will be truly furthering your child's understanding of the natural world and the changes that occur both short term and long term. By carrying on a weather investigation for several weeks, your child should be able to notice patterns, perhaps when it comes to rainfall and temperature. He or she may even be able to predict the weather using his or her new knowledge of clouds. We all know that kids have a lot of energy and need to be able to get up and move. So why not channel some of that energy towards going on a science-focused walk? The only materials you need are comfortable walking shoes and fine-tuned senses. You don't have to go very far. A simple walk around your neighborhood or going to a local park should provide you and your young scientists with many opportunities to explore nature up close. Using your sense of sight, hearing, and smell, challenge your student to observe plants and animals that he or she comes across. Look for animal tracks and other signs that animals have been nearby if no animals are visible during your walk. Try to infer where the animals might be and why they are not clearly visible. Close your eyes and listen. What do you hear? Discuss with your child if he or she thinks it would sound the same at your house compared to where you are walking. Probe why he or she thinks so. If your hands are free, consider taking a science notebook along with you so that your child can record some of the things that he or she observes during your walk, either through words, labeled sketches, or both. Make sure to put the date on the page so that you can compare your observations on another date and start identifying any patterns that may exist. Everyone loves a good souvenir. When appropriate, consider allowing your student to collect a few artifacts from the walk. These could include small rocks, leaves, or flowers. If possible, these artifacts could be glued or taped into your student's notebook or kept in a Ziploc bag. Once you are back at home, have your student share the physical characteristics of the artifacts with you. You can further your child's ability to accurately describe these objects by providing a ruler or other non-standard units for measurement purposes. If you find that you have a few socks at home that are missing their mates, consider engaging your child in sock science. Simply put a sock over each shoe and take a walk through a safe, weedy area. Collect seeds and classify these according to similarities and differences. Adult socks work best because they can go higher up on your child's leg and not only better protect your child, but can also gather more seeds and burrs. For more information, please reference the sock science handout in your packet. If you are looking for something fun to do, how about going on an exploration? Weekends are great for taking a family trip to somewhere new or maybe even going somewhere that is familiar, but taking a new perspective on what is going on there. You can go to a farmer's market to observe fruits and vegetables. The beach offers innumerable opportunities to observe plants and animals as well as practice sun and water safety. A local park with playground equipment can provide hours of fun when it comes to talking about force, motion, and gravity. Even an afternoon spent around a local pond can offer hours of delight as your student makes observations and inferences about the interdependency of plants and animals who live there. If you have the ability to go to a museum, theme park, or zoo, the following locations offer a wealth of science experiences for adults and kids alike. These could include family field trips to Busch Gardens, the Museum of Science and Industry, 
Florida Aquarium, Lowry Park Zoo, Kennedy Space Center, and SeaWorld, just to name a few. With today's busy schedules, you may find yourself and your kids spending hours in the car each week. Try turning off the radio and make the most of your minutes with your child by asking science-related questions during your car trips. Some questions you could ask to start a conversation could include, how are the street signs the same and different? This would target your student's ability to compare and contrast using his or her sense of sight. Most kids have no concept of speed. You can start building an understanding of this concept by asking your child to compare our speed to other cars on the road. Are we going faster or slower? How do you know? There are many forms of energy at work that come together to help us get from location to location safely in our car. Many of us may take for granted the various forms of energy that we use every day until the power goes out. You can start building an appreciation for energy use and conservation by having your student identify forms of energy by asking what forms of energy do you observe being used? Possible answers may include sound energy, such as when music is being played, light energy, for, in, for instance, lights in the car, on the dashboard, car headlights, electrical energy, energy of motion when the car is moving, and chemical energy, combustion in the engine. If you are planning a trip to the local library, encourage your student to check out a few nonfiction books that are science related. These could include books about animals, plants, famous scientists and inventors, weather, various parts of the world, bridges, cars, airplanes, etc. If you can't make it out to the library, consider signing on to myngconnect.com. Students can access their classroom textbooks and other resources to support what they are learning in class. There is also MyOn. Your student has a specific login, usernames, and passwords for each of these websites. Please see the handout in your participant packet as well as talk to your child's teacher for further assistance. If you want to take the science and reading connection one step further, you can encourage your child to help you create your own ABCs of science. Here you could write science words or describe science experiences you've had for each letter of the alphabet. Add a labeled sketch to what you wrote and you are sure to have a cherished book to open again and again. There are a great deal of ideas out there when it comes to doing science at home, from Pinterest posts to parent blogs. Here's a list of some websites that can also be very helpful. These are listed in your participant packet. Please explore these sites at home. Please reference the SERP the Web handout in your packet. Many families allow their students to watch a limited amount of television during the week. If your household operates in a similar fashion, why not use TV time to foster scientific thinking? The programs listed on the slide can also be found in your participant packet, but be sure to check your guide channel for specific times as well as information to help you determine if the content will be both interesting and appropriate for your student. Children can think scientifically when watching non-science specific programs as well. For example, when watching sports, you can discuss the force used to move the ball and the motion of the ball and players. You can identify characters in programs that have scientific jobs. If you are watching a science fiction program, you can discuss if the science is truly accurate. Even when watching cooking shows, you can talk about the physical and chemical changes that are occurring. If you are challenged about where or how to start supporting science at home, Simply sit down and open up a dialogue between you and your child about what he or she is learning in science at school. Some questions that may help start a conversation could include, what did you observe in science class today? What have you been investigating? What did you discover today? What are you still wondering about? Talking about what your child is doing in science class not only communicates to your child that you value science, but that you are interested in his and her developing science skills. After sharing a conversation with your child, you may find that you have gained quite a bit of insight into his or her current science experiences and have hopefully identified a few ways that you can extend his or her science learning at home. Please see the Science Question Stems handout in your participant packet we referenced earlier for more ideas. If the ideas presented so far were not enough, here is a moon observation investigation you can start tonight because the only materials you will need include a calendar or notebook. There's a blank calendar page in your packet, a pencil, and a view of the night sky. Using the blank calendar template, have your child help you fill in the days of the week and dates with our current month. 
When the moon is visible, day or night, go outside or look through a window and observe the moon. Help your child make a quick sketch in today's calendar square. Repeat this same procedure every day for at least two months. Early in the investigation, your student should start to notice a pattern, whether more of the moon appears to be visible or less of the moon appears to be visible. If you continue this long-term investigation for at least two months, your student may be able to predict when a full moon should be able to be seen, half of the moon or new moon, when none of the moon is visible. This investigation is focusing on moon phases and not weather. So if there are a lot of clouds, cloud cover, you may not be able to see much of the moon at all. Clouds obstructing the view of the moon would not be a factor into how much the, of the moon could be seen in regard to the pattern of the moon phases. In summary, we encourage you to explore science at home. Make observations, record change, and ask questions. Discuss the science behind everything around you. The surface of materials, the way things cook, how a car moves, how plants grow, the changing of times of sunrise and sunset, these are just to name a few. You do not need to know all the answers. By asking I wonder questions, you have set the stage for scientific thinking. Once again, thank you for spending time with us today. For additional help and ideas and information, please contact your student's teacher. For information regarding Hillsborough County's Public Schools Elementary Science events and policies, please contact Shauna Torado, Elementary Science Supervisor. Thank you for your continued support in science.